For the latest New York GA news and other Irish American sports stories, visit thelonghaulpodcast.com where you'll find all of our latest podcasts, including our review podcast on the Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano fight, an interview with Kerry football legend Pat Spillane, and a podcast with Mead football legend Graham Garrity. So I'm here with Jamie Boyle, the captain of the New York team, ahead of the Talton Cup game uh, Saturday. Jamie, thanks for joining me. Um, harping back just to this Sligo game, uh, you're one of the standout players against Sligo. Um, how, did you, how did you feel after the game? Um, disappointed, you know. Um, everybody here in the panel and management, you know, we're expecting a win. Uh, so anything short of that is, you know, you're going to be massively disappointed. Um, we, we were in it though, you know, a game like that can come down to a few bounces. You know, I think it came down to the last three minutes, they started pulling away. Uh, you know, that just might show their experience and maybe, you know, us needing to work on a few more things. But um, yeah, disappointed, you know, you, you kind of, you don't dwell on it, but you take like 24 hours, you, you mope around a little bit and then, you know, it's on to the next thing. So I'd just like to get some background information on you, Jamie. Of course, you're an American born uh, player. One of the, there's a few, I think there's about a dozen of you on, on the panel. Uh, it's great to see, first of all. But I'd like to just go back into your your background. I think your um, your grandparents are from Donegal, is it? Yes, they are. My grandparents uh, on my mom's side, the Meehans, uh, they're from Donegal town. Um, they moved over here in the '60s. Uh, they had nine kids uh, that they raised just over the bridge there in uh, Inwood. Uh, so all my uncles and aunts grew up playing uh, Gaelic football for Good Shepherd. Um, uh, my dad also played for Good Shepherd that my parents met, and then um, they, they raised us upstate, like an hour north. But I never heard of Good Shepherd. Is that a club? Or? It's uh, now does not exist anymore. I think they folded uh, oh, maybe man. in the late 80s. If uh, you ask any of the old timers around here, they'd know Good yeah, Shepherd. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, they haven't been around since I think like the late 80s. Yeah. They, they folded. I need to do a history podcast in the New York GA, yeah. wouldn't <laughs> But uh, and you're, 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 you were saying your father was involved. He started, he's one of the phony men, members of St. Brendan's, wasn't it? Yes. Um, Sean Riley, who's also on the panel, uh, his dad, Kenny Riley, uh, they live in the same town as us in Monroe. Um, um, they would have been two of the founding members. There's a bunch of the guys up there. Um, uh, Niall Croak would have been one of the founding members. Uh, Stephen O'Shea, who actually just um, sadly passed away, I think, within the last year. Uh, he was the founding president. Uh, but yeah, they started up by uh, probably like uh, 02, maybe. Okay. So were you playing uh, Gaelic football all through underage? Yeah, um, so uh, when, we, when I first started playing, my dad would bring me uh, to Rockland, uh, I think for like U10. So I played there for the first year and then everyone was like, we're traveling all this way, let's just create our own club. So yeah, I played like U10 uh, through U16. I don't think uh, we played any U18. And where were you living? In Monroe, New York. And where is that in relation to Rockland? It's uh, upstate, probably another like 25, 30 minutes. Beyond Rockland? Beyond Rockland, oh, yeah. yeah. So it's about an hour here from the city. Um, yeah, just U10 uh, was Rockland. And then I think we started the, I was like eight or nine. So then we started uh, St. Brendan's, like U10. Yeah. Um, won every trophy there was. Now I joke around, because now I'm obviously Barnabas, that uh, yeah. my age group never lost to Barnabas. So okay. like Patty's field where we train, I, I tell them I've never lost on this field. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I played uh, U10, U12, U14, and then U16. Um, and you used to be getting cup players of all sorts together to play with yeah. St. Brendan's. Yes, uh, mostly, yeah, mostly soccer players, but um, like we had some serious athletes like on the basketball team. So my dad would have been like a coach for basketball too. So he's always recruiting, you know, especially if we're leaving a tournament and maybe Rockland or something was just down the street and we had another game. He'd be like, hey, let me take you down the street and, you know, we'll, we'll play a, a Gaelic game. So, yeah, we had we had a lot of like first timers out there for a lot of the games, but. You're an extremely talented player, Jamie. You're lightning fast fitness. I've seen you in the runs. I, you're like an elite I'd level. Say I have good fitness. Yeah, you were good fitness and good lightning. speed. But you were also had uh, playing American football. Tell me about your uh, your your time playing American football, college football. Yeah, so I played uh, soccer. Like soccer was probably my first love growing up. Uh, played all the way up through high school, um, and then I started playing um, uh, varsity soccer my sophomore year. Kind of leaving that summer. Uh, we had a serious uh, football team, American football team uh, at my high school. Uh, they were going like the state championship every year, so they were looking for a kicker. It was kind of like the missing piece to the team. And um, uh, a friend of the family was close with the head coach and said, hey, you know, I got this kid, he's only a sophomore, he could potentially play for you for three years. Um, so, you know, you should take a look at him. Anyways, I left soccer practice, went over to the football field, kicked for him, he was like, 
um, yeah, you know, we'd, uh, we'd love to have you if you can play both soccer and football this year. So I was literally running from the soccer field to the football field. Right. You know, I'd still have the football knee pads on going to soccer practice. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I, I did um, very well, I guess, my sophomore year kicking. Um, and then I started going to, like, my dad flew me all over the country. Uh, end of sophomore year, you know, going into the summer, started going to camps. I, I placed, like, really well, like, good enough to start, you know, the guys who ran the camps were saying, you, you could go to college for this. So I kind of had to make a, like, a, you know, a, a big boy decision at that age to drop soccer, which I loved. And, you know, all my buddies and friends were, you know, on the teams that I was playing with. So that was, that was tough, but um, anyways, I dropped that and me and my dad went on like a cross country, uh, you know, uh, tour of every college and camp that was going on for like the next two years. So I didn't really have a social life in high school because I was going to camps like every weekend and I, uh, I can't imagine the, my dad's credit card statement. <laughs> and did you get a scholarship in college through the- I did, oh. yeah. So I got a full ride to go to the University of Central Florida, which is down in Orlando. Okay. Uh, What did you study? Uh, I didn't study much, but uh, <laughs> no, I went in, just being totally honest, I went in studying business because like, you know, who is 17, I don't think anyone really knows what they want to do. So I was like, yeah, business sounds good. I only figured out a 30. So. Yeah, I still don't know. But uh, yeah, then I, I did business. There's so many math classes that I was like, I, you know, I, I had, I was almost failing out of school and um, all my buddies on the team were like, uh, come join uh, communications, like, uh, that field and they're like all of us are in it there's 300 kids in each class it's it's pretty easy so i switched and i got i had almost a 4-0 my last two years just because you know, you're surrounded by uh, all your your buddies and friends taking all the tests and stuff but anyways uh my degree is in communications and you're why are you, are you a project manager are you working in? yeah for a general contractor uh, here in the city okay so nothing to do with my degree when yeah. i came home kind of same thing somebody uh somebody through gaelic football actually uh sean fitzpatrick Uh, he would have, he'd live in my hometown in Monroe. He, was, he said, um, you know, my brother owns a company if you're looking for a job and yeah. went down, interviewed, and that was that. I was, yeah. a, I was a, in construction. <laughs> so tell me about your, uh, your football career uh, in adult level. You, did, you stopped playing for a couple of years, then you went back and joined Byron. Was it what age were you then? Yeah, so I, again, I, we, I played U16. I don't think I played at all, like really when I was 17 or 18. When I came back home to New York, Um, I played I, maybe a, a year and a half with Donegal, New York, um, but I was playing like juniors and stuff. I, that, was, that was when their senior team was uh, really good. They were winning all the championships. So, you know, seeing those guys in training was like, you know, A was like, wow, I'm not putting in that kind of work because, you know, I was 22, 23, enjoying the city every weekend and, uh, you know, just wasn't in shape and I didn't, you know, probably give it the effort I should have. So anyways, yeah, after a year and a half, I was like, this is too much of a commitment. You know, you get hit up every weekend like, hey, got, hey, there's a game. You know, you'd find out on Friday there's a game on Sunday morning and you already made plans. So I was like, this isn't for me. <laughs> But then I guess just as I got older and matured, you know, uh, things become more important. And um, I'd say the social life's calmed down a little bit. And through the pandemic, you know, sitting at home and you're kind of bored, I started getting in serious shape, um, you know, lost a good amount of weight and, um, was kind of looking to do something. So uh, Connor Hogan's one of my good buddies and I'd always give him like a ribbing because you know, Barnabas and they could never beat us. So uh, I, I had been on him about, let me know when training's going on and I'll show up to the park. And he was like, yeah, okay, like you're not gonna come. And um, anyways, he, he told me what it was, I showed up and then that was it. So I started playing the year that they won it the first time. So 2000 was your first year, the, fir the first country? 2020, yeah, 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 yeah 2020, yeah. that summer I joined uh, oh. right in time for championship. Oh. And if you were such a good kicker, how did you end up cornerback? <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know what? I grew up playing forwards. It's, uh, when I, you know what happened though? When I, when I came back and I was playing with Dunny Gall, I was so like out of position, I think just from not playing like for all those years that I would I'd just be wandering out there in the forward line. I just, I just didn't know like really where to move. Yeah. And um, then with cornerback, I don't know. I, just, I said I was a back because I was like, I'll stick on anyone. You know what I mean? I could at least probably get a spot like that. And um, yeah, cornerback wasn't my choice. <laughs> I wanted to probably be like a halfback, but um, I guess here um, in New York, most of the danger men at the time were like, you know, corner forward. So uh, they were putting me on, you know, at least not at the beginning, but as I kind of gained their trust, they were putting me on, you know, the top guy on, on the other team. So then I kind of got stuck in the cornerbacks. <laughs> so you must be en really enjoying your football the last two years since you came back. Oh yeah, it's unreal. I, I said, um, I think it was after we won it the second time, someone asked me like, 
you know, it's unreal. You, you know, you just came back and you won two championships. And I was like, yeah, the first one, I didn't probably even really appreciate it as much as I should have. Cause you know, you come back and you win and you're just like, oh, this is, you know, what happens. But then, you know, doing the whole year, the off season, being with the guys, becoming more friendly with all the guys. And then, you know, even getting to know the people in the community, then when like you're, you're winning it for them, you know? So yeah. that was like the second time we won it just this past year, the championship was like, it was way more special, you know? So like I, I've spoken to a few of the other American lads here, like I suppose Tiernan would be the standout guy who's played the whole way up and he's played the whole way up, but you could see that he always wanted to play senior football. So you kind of stepped away from it. Was, was it always an ambition or was it just something that came back to you since you went? To go back and play? Yeah, yeah I think um, I always wanted to come back when you're you know, in your 20s. I think you think you have forever. And um, I was just always thought, yeah, I'll go back, I'll go back. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're 28 and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I probably didn't think, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I probably wouldn't have went back to play. It's just almost sitting at home in the boredom. And then I got in such good shape that I was like, I got to use it, you know? <laughs> you strike me as someone who's always in good shape, so I didn't I, realize I that you were going to... I always run, but like my diet wasn't good. And again, like the, you know, I'd uh, enjoy beverages on the weekend, so <laughs> that'll kill you. It doesn't matter how much you're running, you know? Beverages, yeah. <laughs> But uh, fast forward to Saturday, so Jim, you were named captain this year of the panel, uh, uh, of the New York panel. There's like 10 or 12 American lads there. Is there a, a kind of a bond between those American lads or how do you interact with the rest of the Yeah, team? we don't like the rest of the guys, the Irish guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, so a lot of the American guys would be Barnabas guys. So the bond there is already extremely strong. And a lot of them are like younger. I feel like a, an old man with them. You know, the, the two Brosnans, uh, uh, Dylan Curran, um, everybody's, you know, like uh, early 20s, the Ma all the Mathers boys, but I would say most of them are, are Barnabas. Uh, I mean, there might be a guy, an odd guy or two that might not be in, inside Barnabas, but yeah, the bond is incredible. Even like a lot of these guys would be our rivals, you know, Johnny Glenn and uh, Vinnie Cadden, like these guys would be Sligo and, you know, we hate them. But then, you know, coming together in December and January, the and just being with, with them for three, four days a week, putting in the hard work with them. And then, you know, we, we do some, you know, on the weekends and stuff, we get together and, and do some things. So, yeah, the bond with everybody is just, it continues to get stronger and stronger. Is the dressing uh, is the dressing room a bit different having the Irish barn lads there? Because you've grown up the whole way and it's been all American barn and uh, the dressing room might be slightly different with fellas, ho fellas from home, how they do things. Have, has there been anything different about the that you've learned off the Irish lads? Uh, it's, more funny. <laughs> it's funny because like we'll, we'll do like their accent and stuff and uh, you know over here the Irish uh, would be probably the minority in most circles right you have more Americans so you know we make fun of their accent and stuff and then when I found when we were here the, like you know on this team the Americans are the minority so <laughs> hearing some of them do the American accent is so funny man like it's like a country, like it almost like they, they're putting it on like they're from Texas or something. And everything is, what's up, man? And we're like, do we sound like that? So like that, that's been a, a funny part of just the dressing room and you know the warm ups and stuff and and that that part. Of it. Getting down to the the football, so Saturday the Talton Cup. Um, it's the first time New York have played a team outside of Connacht. Um, it's the first time that you've got a second game. How important is this game for the development of New York and the development of this core group of, of players? Because it's your first year effectively together. Yeah, it's uh, it's huge. The the experience that you know all of us are going to get, but especially the young guys to be able to, you know, it's it's um, I don't want to say eye opening, but the, the you know. Once you've done something, then, you know, you, it's almost like you could do more, you know, that that's the expectation. So I think for the young kids to go over there and play a game, you know, in Ireland is huge. I know a lot of them have done it through the world games and the college teams. Um, but yeah, it's huge. And like now, um, I was saying to someone before, the expectation, I think, you, you know, almost the timeline, like I would say early 2010s, it was, you know, you hope New York gave them a game. You hope they stayed in it. To then, you know, you got towards like the Leitrim games where it was like, you know, we're looking to push to make a, a you know, not even a close game. We're looking to win. To now it's like, you know, it's it, that's it's beyond the belief that we can win. It's just it's a matter of like when, you know. So going over, it's not, you know, oh, we want to keep it close. Oh, we want to, you know, this is great. We get to play in the cup game. You know, uh, that is great. But like we're going over there to win, you know. Is this your first time going over? Is this will this be your first time playing in Ireland? No, I played with the Fela uh, team uh, for two years. So when I was like, uh, whatever that is, twelve and thirteen years old. But you didn't play in those World Games a couple of years ago, so it's been. A no, yeah, with uh, 
just like my commitments to American football, being away in college, and then yeah, yeah. not really caring about Gaelic the early 20s. No, I never played on them. I wish I did. So looking ahead to Saturday, you said you're there to win. Uh, it's going to be probably stepping up a level against Sligo, but uh, is it something you embrace being the underdogs again against, uh, against Offaly? Yeah, I think uh, we've embraced that mentality of it's kind of us versus everyone, you know, and, and it's, it's like we have a bubble here and everyone inside the bubble believes. And um, yeah, there's, you know, I, if you're not expecting to win and saying we're going to win, like what are you, what are you doing, you know? So um, everyone here thinks we're going to win and that's why we're going over. Otherwise we, we wouldn't, you know, we could take a trip later in the summer and have a great time. Has it been hard to get together after the Sligo game? I know there's some, been some club games and you're going to be playing on grass Saturday and yeah. there's not many grass pitches around here, but I, I, I've heard that you've been getting a couple of uh, couple of pitches yeah. uh, out in Frank Golden Park, St. Barnabas yep. and up in Rockland. Yep, we've gone, we've kind of spread it around, but management's done a great job of kind of mixing that up where we've played at Paddy's Field in, in the Bronx. We've gone to Frank Golden in Queens and, um, and then upstate to Rockland. We've gotten a, a bunch of uh, challenge matches up there. So, uh, yeah, that's been good. It's totally different. The way the ball bounces, you going down to pick up the ball. So the first few times we were doing that, I think here you'd get a nice little bounce where you can get your hands clean under it. And then we go to the, you know, the grass fields and we had a lot of the uh, refs blowing the whistle that were picking it off the floor. So, yeah, it is. A, it's a it's def and the bouncing, you know, everything's totally different. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you know much about the Diofli team? I know John Mon's involved and Tomas O'Shea. Uh, do you know much about the Diofli team and have you got a chance to analyze their games? Yeah, since the draw was made, um, we've all kind of been sending links of, you know, some of their past games. So I've watched uh, the Wexford game um, uh, just yesterday. I was watching the whole thing. You know, they're a really talented, skillful team. Um, you know, they got some uh, some speedsters in the back line. Um, we've gotten a couple just data sheets and um, things like that, just talking about percentages and, you know, where they like to kick the ball out, things like that. So we've, that's all been shared, you know, just amongst the team and things we've been talking about just throughout, you know, on WhatsApp uh, throughout the day and stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're a great team. That's why they, they've won two games in the, in the cup so far and that's why they're there. But is there, um, so you haven't played any, they've had two games, they've had a whole league campaign. It's a massive disadvantage, but do you take, do you take that into consideration at all or is it just something that you just deal with? Uh, yeah, we're just dealing with it. It was the same thing with Sligo. Like they had a bunch of games rolling into our game. We knew that they'd be the more experienced team. They had they were fresh off a, you know, a bunch of games coming in. But uh, you know, I don't think uh, anything that you know happened in the Sligo game was surprising to us, or you know, anything that you know. The the challenge matches we get here between ourselves are extremely competitive. Now we just threw in uh, the junior team is going back in a month, so they've joined in now. Uh, some of our challenge matches so we've been constantly mixing it up it's definitely not the same as a as a real game but uh yeah we feel like the our preparation has been good we were here earlier and the, all the underage players were there um, what did you make of that the little training session that you had with the the, yeah, the young great. kids it was great it was good to see the uh the sea of barnabas jerseys in there the <laughs> green and uh, yellow they're all johnny's kids were there. Yeah, yeah yeah johnny and nick um yeah it's great we so they they'll train at uh patties before us uh, usually one of us will uh, kind of take a turn, if not more, at going a little bit early um, to our trainings to kind of help out with them. But yeah, it's massive. Like you see, you see that, and you're like, that's you know, that's the future of of New York GAA. So it's ma it's massive for us and and for them. Perfect. Thanks very much, Jamie. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, thanks. For the latest New York GAA news and other Irish American sports stories, visit thelonghaulpodcast.com where you'll find all of our latest podcasts including our review podcast on the Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano fight an interview with Kerry football legend Pat Spillane and a podcast with Mead football legend Graham Garrity and don't forget to follow us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter at the Long Haul Pod.